Yeah, we back. We back. Now, today is going to be a quick video, man. Today, January 14th, a legendary declaration was put out today on January 14th. Something that we never really hear about or learn about in school, right? Take a look up on the screen. Liberty or death. The government of Haiti from the headquarters in Port-au-Prince, January 14th. The declaration says, the governor general, considering that a great number of native blacks and men of color are suffering in the United States of America for want of the means of returning, decrees, there shall be allowed to the captains of American vessels the sum of $40 for each individual they may restore to the country. He orders that this decree shall be printed, published, and posted up, and that a copy thereof be immediately forwarded to the Congress of the United States of America by the governor general, signed, Dessalines. Now, on the 14th of January, 1804, about two weeks, after Haiti gained its independence, Dessalines first order of business as the head of state of the country was to go into the state coffers and offer $40 per person that American ship captains were able to transport to Haiti. And any black man, any black woman that made it to Haiti's shores was automatically gonna be granted citizenship. Now, the reason for this political initiative was for two reasons. Number one, during the Haitian Revolution, there was a large number of Haitian citizens that left the country during the time of war, right? They went mainly to Louisiana. The size of Louisiana, I believe the population doubled or tripled during the Haitian Revolution. Also during this time in the United States, there was a large population of what they call the free people of color, who at the time were skilled workers who had expertise in a variety of industries. You had carpenters, blacksmiths, masons, shoemakers, tailors, barbers, butchers, musicians, teachers, business owners, shopkeepers, etc etc so one of Desilene's first order of business was let's get some of our citizens back that went to louisiana let's get some of them back and let's also let's also bring in some of our cousins from the united states who already acquired some skills and let's bring them on for the ride you know what i mean so big up to Desilene for i guess you could say this was the first uh pan-african declaration or pan-african law that was put on the books unfortunately Desilene died about two years into his administration so he could not fulfill his dreams and carry out his political objectives. But thankfully, his successors picked up the torch and carried on the work. Over the course of the next 50 or 60 years, thousands of American families, black American families, would migrate and settle in Haiti. The most notable black man from the United States that would migrate and settle in Haiti would be Mr. Prince Saunders. Take a look up on the screen. As you can see, Prince Saunders, what many people would consider one of the premier intellectuals and academics of the 19th century. Prince Saunders was an African-American teacher, scholar, diplomat, and author who different sources say was born in either Lebanon, Connecticut, or Thetford, Vermont. During his life, Saunders helped set up schools for African-Americans in Massachusetts and also in Haiti for King Henry Christophe. During his time in Haiti, Saunders also penned the Haitian papers, which were a translation of the Haitian laws with his commentary. He was a proponent of black immigration in Haiti, where he became a naturalized citizen. Because of his influence in establishing schools for African Americans, Saunders was one of the most significant black educators in the early 19th century in the United States, as well as Haiti. He lived his last days in Port-au-Prince, where he died in 1839. Take a look up on the screen. Mention should be made of Prince Saunders, an American Negro. He was born in New England and attended Morris Charity School at Dartmouth College in 1807 and 1808. Saunders' activity on behalf of the less fortunate members of his own race won him the friendship of several influential Americans who sent him to England with numerous letters of recommendation. At the suggestion of the English abolitionists, he came to Haiti to assist in organizing the schools and to forward the cause of Protestantism. He became almost at once a rabid follower of Christophe and determined to make known the integrity of the king's character and the enlightened nature of the government. In 1816, he published the Haitian papers in London and two years later reissued a book in Boston. It is said that Saunders introduced vaccination into Haiti and personally vaccinated Christophe's children. During his time, Saunders was known for his intelligence and his eloquence, evidence of his strong educational upbringing. He was known to impress people with his knowledge from his education, an education that was rare for an African American at the time. After Christophe's death, biographer Harold Van Buren Voorhees claimed that Saunders was made attorney general by Haiti's new president, Jean-Pierre Boyer. Saunders then lived most of his remaining life in Haiti before he died in Port-au-Prince on the 22nd of January, 1839. And actually, many people don't know, but in the year 1820, in the summer of 1820, Prince Saunders was supposed to orchestrate, or organize, I should say, a trip from the United States to Haiti for American families who wanted to partake in the voyage. Take a look up on the screen. Christophe received Clarkson's suggestions and wrote the limonade to American abolitionists 
offering to defray the cost of transportation for the Negro immigrants, who he was willing to receive without any stipulation regarding the Spanish part of the island. There were many thousands of the free people of color who wished to go to Haiti, but the death of Christophe prevented the signing of an agreement, whereby he was to provide a vessel to transport them and advance $25,000 as a first donation towards incidental expenses. Now, time out. Now, in the year 1820, the year that Christophe died, when Dessalines was alive, he had offered $40 per person, right? And when Christophe came to power, like I told you before, Christophe, big money, big paper, you know, billionaire black man in the 19th century, he offered $25,000 per family that arrives in Haiti. So nigga, the price went up. Niggas was offering $40 at first, now, you know what I'm saying, 15 years later, we offering $20,000 per family, you know what I'm saying? Big money, big money. Unfortunately, Christophe died in October 1820 before the deal could be finalized, but even after the death of Christophe, the Haitian government continued to pursue this policy, and I believe in the year 1825, uh, the, first, the first American families actually arrived under the regime of President Jean-Pierre Boyer, and I believe the next wave came in the 1850s and the 1860s, and uh, yeah, so, you know, these are things we are typically not taught in school. And this is also why I'm so passionate about black men prioritizing the needs of our people first, prioritizing the interests of our people first, the same way that our forefathers did. I have nothing against anybody else. I have nothing against any other group of people, but I just believe that black men must prioritize the interests of our people first. Nothing against anybody else, but I believe and I've always believed that our people must come first. And a major reason why we are in the position that we are in today is because we are not prioritizing the interests of our people first. We are not. We're putting the interests of our pockets first, the interests of other groups first, the interests of other governments first, but we are not putting our people first. And it shows. It shows by the results that we can show for it. So anyways, man, like I always say, man, black man, put your people first. Put your people first. Put your women and children first. Put your country first. Put your ancestors first. That's all there is to it, man. Anyways, man, it's your boy Never Carter That's a lean back in the building. Yes, indeed. Cash app up on the screen, and I'm gone. Peace. Reincarnated, I'm back in the original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass, and I left with abundance and came back to famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fallen. Used to be running, now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applauded. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shit. They stuck in the mix. Really, my heart would be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down in generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genders. Falsifying information. No, they got malice intentions. Step in the room and I'm feeling attention. Enemy watching me, blocking my vision. Care for the check, cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need it protected. Ready for war like a young money Congo. Never decided the team is the motto. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and making ambition. I'm blessed by the guys, but I ain't religious. I came for the power, they came for the bitch. They making no hour, they wage. I got business. This shit is an art, and it can never be taught. Selling my soul, I can never be bought. Play with my money, I see you ain't caught. Run to the check and I do it for sport Babylon falling, I go to the source Packing my luggage and go overseas Shorty be with me and she so at least Shorty be chugged and I'm calling her Hershey Secret intelligence probably gon' murder me Don't fuck with brands cause nigga I'm Haitian Say the wrong shit and you're smacking their faces